We continue on with The Church Begins. We're talking about Paul is sent. Reading from Acts chapter 9 and verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, it's me, Lord. The Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah for one named Saul, a man of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man, man named Ananias coming in, and laying his hands on him, that he might receive his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much evil he did to your saints at Jerusalem. Here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go your way, for he is my chosen vessel to bear my name before the nations and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias departed and entered into the house. Laying his hand on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he received his sight. He arose and was baptized. He took food and was strengthened. Saul stayed several days with the disciples who were at Damascus. Immediately in the synagogues he proclaimed the Christ, that he is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Isn't this he who in Jerusalem made havoc of those who called on this name? And he had come here, intending to bring them bound before the chief priests? From the conversion of Saul, we go to the consequences of his conversion. The first consequence we may be aware of, although it's not stated in this passage, is that he changed his name, changed from Saul of Tarsus to Paul of Tarsus. And we read that in Acts chapter 13. Paul's conversion was a total transformation. His attitudes, character and relationships with God, fellow believers and the unbelieving world were utterly transformed. And a changed life is the ultimate proof that conversion is real, and that the Holy Spirit is working. Now that through Jesus and his cross, Paul had been put right with God, Paul, as with all believers, enjoyed direct access to the Father, as the Spirit witnessed with his Spirit that he was the Father's child. And perhaps Paul's prayers were for forgiveness of sins, of self-righteousness, and cruel persecution of Jesus and the Church. And no doubt they contained worship, the mouth that had breathed murderous threats against Jesus like a roaring lion and against Jesus' followers was now breathing prayers and praise to God like a bleating lamb. Paul's life was changed from self-righteousness to a righteousness through Jesus Christ. And the evidence of this was a change in the way that he lived his life. And Ananias went to meet Paul after having been sent by God. And no doubt he'd heard of Paul and he's persecuting the church. And at the beginning, as we read, he was hesitant to do this. But in the end, he went to Straight Street as told and ministered to Paul. Upon laying hands upon him and identifying with him, calling him brother and ministering the love of Jesus to this, his former enemy, the Holy Spirit ended Paul and Paul could see again. Paul then ate some food and spent some time with the Damascene disciples. It's amazing, really, that Paul was accepted. The Jews were confused and astonished by him. For wasn't this the man who was going to kill followers of this Jesus? But Saul increased more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived at Damascus, proving that this is the Christ. When many days were fulfilled, the Jews conspired together to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They watched the gates both day and night that they might kill him. But his disciples took him by night and let him down through the wall, lowering him in a basket. 
when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a true disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. He was with them entering into Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. He spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. When the brothers knew it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the assemblies throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and were built up. They were multiplied, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. What has happened so dramatically that he has joined them? Whenever he preached to the Jews, they were confused. Paul, however, did not settle down in Damascus, and according to Galatians 1, verses 17 to 18, spent three years in Arabia. Some people seem to think that he spent the time with Jesus to learn from him by revelation, his distinctive truths, just as the disciples had spent about three years with him while Jesus was on earth. Paul then returned to Damascus, and while there the Jewish leaders plotted to kill him. So he escaped with the help of the other believers to Jerusalem.